Welcome back to track one on Python Web Conference day three. I am joined by Adam Hopkins today, one of the core maintainers of SANIC, and he's going to be talking to us today about SANIC, so I'm super excited. Uh, I will let him take it away, and we'll uh, see you after the talk. If there's questions, put them in Slido. Otherwise, we'll talk to you all at the uh, breakout and face-to-face. -face. Hello, everyone. Um, as, uh, as I said, my name is Adam Hopkins. Uh, I am a core maintainer of the SANIC project. Um, um, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about mostly about that today. Uh, and also I am a, uh, senior software engineer at packet fabric, uh, company, uh, operates as a network as a service platform, um, to provide uh, cloud connectivity. Um, so here's some details about me here. You can find, you know, some information about me on, uh, on, uh, GitHub, um, all, you know, Santa Claus, obviously all hosted on GitHub and, and on Twitter. So let's talk a little bit about. What is SANIC? So SANIC, um, as some of you may probably already know, is, is, is a framework. You know, the whole idea behind it is that it's a it's a, a one of many tools that the Python, uh, Python ecosystem has for building out uh, web applications. Um, but what is a little bit different is um, it also is shipped with a web server, um, and so. Um, whereas uh, some of the other frameworks, uh, you have to kind of bring your own web server into it. Um, Santa already is going to going to come with one integrated. So, um, you know, just you know, giving a little bit of information is you know, you, you build your application, you can ship and deploy with it, or if you prefer to use um, um, uh, ASGI, you know, it's fully compliant, so you can use an ASGI uh, web server as well. Um, but what are we going to be talking about today? Primarily, this new version here, 21.3, that just came out uh, earlier this week. Um, this is a pretty exciting release for us. Um, you know, there's there's been a lot of uh, uh, work that's been put into this one over the you know probably the last year or so. Uh, we try to have regular releases uh, every three months, so. So this is our first release of the uh, version 21. So we do a March release, uh, June, September, and, and December. And the December release is our LTS. So um, you know we try to lo front load any you know big breaking changes towards this time of year, so that when we get towards the LTS, you know things kind of stable out. And 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 this year is a little bit different um, because we're making um, a lot more um, optimizations. Kind of under the hood, um, and that's that's primarily what I want to talk to you about um, about about these changes, about these optimizations that we're making, um, and you know why we why we made these changes, how we made them, and then kind of the um, you know the practical uh, aspect uh, impact about uh, from them. So, I'm going to show you some benchmarks, um, but before I do that, I'm, I want to state that I'm, I'm very hesitant. Um, anytime anyone shows me benchmarks, and I'm very hesitant to share benchmarks with other people. And the reason why is that I find them to be, um, um, sometimes people look at uh, statistics and they, and they read a little bit too much into them, you know, especially when it comes to um, trying to benchmark one framework versus another framework. You know, it's, you're very highly susceptible to changes in the environment. Um, you know, even on the same platform, you might get different uh, results from one run to the next. So, so, so I'm, I'm hesitant for that reason. But the reason why I want to show them and want to want to use them is that there is somewhat of a of a um, you can kind of tease out some sort of trends and some sort of relationships. And so that's really what 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 this what what I'm going to show here is you know this is benchmarking requests per second um, on the last version uh, before before the recent release, last LTS. Uh, the bars on the left is is a route that's uh, you know pretty static. There's nothing ch uh, changing going on in here. And the one on the right, this is what um, what I'm going to refer to as a dynamic route, where this one, two, three, four, five, six portion is the portion that kind of gets um, uh, changed based upon um, uh, what comes through in the request. Um, so this is going to be one of the things that that we'll get into, and so so what we can see here is uh, from version twenty point twelve to twenty one point three, we made some pretty good improvements in Sanic. Um, 
number one, um, you can obviously everything is is a little bit faster, but you also see that that the dynamic routing is uh, even a little bit closer. We've sort of narrowed the gap between static and dynamic routing, which which is pretty exciting. Um, so, so one of the things that we're going to be um, um, you know, you know, kind of focused upon, like I said, is kind of, um, you know, end to end optimizing the entire request response cycle. So looking at every single line, making sure that it's, that it's there and, and it's making everything faster. So, so, so what is the reason that 21.3 is faster? Um, um, and in general, why is async IO faster than non-async IO platforms? And, and I think for that, you know, um, we need to make sure that everyone understands that this is primarily um, benefiting IO bound tasks. So if you have a CPU bound task, you know, async IO is not in Sanic, not going to make your platform faster. It's not a, it's not a magic bullet. It's not going to, um, you, you know, just magically turn everything that your, that your, that your platform is doing quicker. But uh, what it is going to do um, is it is going to help out um, and try to handle more requests per second concurrently. Um, and, um, um, you know, hopefully with, with sort of the increase, you know, routing, what we're going to try to do is make everything a little bit more, a uh, little more efficient. Um, so just like, uh, this wonderful little girl here, um, you know, we're trying to, to make sure that, um, you know, we can, we can handle multiple things at once. Um, so, um, um, let's, uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about, about the router. So first of all, what is a router? So inside of any framework, um, you basically need to have, um, you know, some, portion of code that needs to basically take this, this root here and needs to translate it into, uh, into a function, to a handler to execute. Um, and um, so basically what we're doing is, you know, this is kind of what the frameworks needs to do. It gets this information here. It needs to parse it all out and it needs to bring it from, from one place. Bring it to another. That's all it has to do. So the reason, um, the, the, the way that we kind of, um, handle things in in um, in Sanic is we have uh, this syntax here. This this allows us to indicate that that the root that we're looking for is going to be dynamic, and, and this could be uh, you know any kind of content inserted here. So the way that we handle this in the old version is um, um, the developer would define a string, and that would get translated into a regular expression, and this. Uh, if anyone's familiar with, um, you know, kind of the way things were um, in Django back in the day, I think they've recently updated and they're, they're no longer doing it. This they're doing this style now, but that's basically, um, you, you know, we just take the the entire string that we're looking for, make a giant regular expression, and then when we need to try to make a match, what do we do? We just run a loop. Um, you know, obviously this is not the most efficient. You know, what if you've got you know, a hundred, a thousand endpoints, um, and you're trying to match on number 99 or, you know, 999, like you have to go through a whole bunch of endpoints before you get to the one that you want to. So, um, you know, th there's gotta be a better way. Um, and this is something I think, um, has been years in the making. I've been involved, um, with Sanic since, um, uh, I guess about 2018, uh, is when we took the the project and turned it into a community organization, um, and I think right off the bat, the router was sort of the thing that I wanted to change, you know, most and try to try to try to do something about. Um, and and we've spent years trying to figure out what's the best way to do this. Um, you know, we we looked at using Hyperscan, uh, which is a C based uh, regular expression matching library, uh, super fast. Um, um, we looked into using Cython. Um, you know, we looked into all sorts of different um, styles, and and we kind of stumbled upon um, is something that uh, the Falcon project is 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 sub similar to what what they're doing, and basically creating a an optimized router that is generated every single time at startup. Um, it's going to do an analysis based upon 
what uh, routes are declared um, in your application. And based upon that, it's going to build out um, a tree. Um, you know, so call it an abstract, uh, abstract syntax tree. Um, um, you know, we're not actually using the AST module, if you're familiar with that in, inside of um, uh, the standard library, uh, but it's sort of a sim similar concept where, where we're, we're, we're looking at um, um, sort of what are the similar parts? How can we build your application and put it into tree format? And then what is the best way that we can get to a particular route um, um, inside of your application? And, 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 and so let's take a little bit of a look at what that this is gonna be like. So let's say we've got you know, a few roots here. You can see there's a few static parts here that are all the same. These orange parts, these are all of um, all the dynamic, all the dynamic parts. And so what we want to do is we want to try to try to match as many of the redundant parts as we can. Um, excuse me. So 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 that we can um, try to navigate this this tree as, as quickly as we can. And so the way that's going going to look is something like this: is we 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 map. Um, you know, all sort of like levels. So here you can see, you know, there's part A. So we've got a whole bunch of stuff that's underneath that. You know, down here, we've got a whole bunch of things that are that are under foo. So we, we, so, so we're, we're, we're creating this tree and eventually what we want to do is we want to turn this into, into code. Um, so like I said, is this a better approach? Um, yeah, I, I think the results show that it is. I mean, you know, in, in, in 20.12, um, this is where we were benchmarking and we, we cut that number almost in half just on the route, on, on the router. Um, so I think one of the, one of the big takeaways here um, is not only um, were we able to create a, a more um, efficient, uh, quicker uh, routing system, but uh, if you notice down here, um, it has a lot less uh, wild swings. You know, the, the the numbers here are more consistent from one run to the next, um, which is you know, which is really um, really awesome, I think. But but I wanted to try to take a little bit of a sidetrack here um, and talk about go back to benchmarking. So I gave you this little spiel about how I generally don't like um, benchmarking um, because I think it gives people a false impression. But I will say. There, are, there is some really good uses for it. And um, this is something that, um, um, you know, we try to do as much as we possibly can inside Sanic. So if, if somebody comes along and has a really wonderful idea, um, you know, we try to be a very open community, try to get people really involved, um, let people know how to help out. Um, and, and what happens if you come up with this, you know, great idea and you, and you add um, uh, and, it slows the whole system down. Well, that's not that's not really helpful. So we need to try to figure out how can we make improvements um, without reducing speed. So speed is you know uh, one of the core uh, components of the Sanic project. Um, you know we try to make it a a very uh, fast um, as we can, um, um, and also you know try to stay as unopinionated as we can. So so. So one of the ways that we do that is by benchmarking. So, so what we're looking at here is three different functions, um, you know, three different ideas that I had on how we can um, do some, some calculations inside of this, this, new, uh, this new router. So which one's going to be the best? Um, so what I really like, and I would highly suggest you take a look at, is the, this tiny project. You just do pip install timey and, and you just kind of put this little decorator around a function, um, you know, and you'd find some functions. I've got three here, you know, we're going to, we're going to run these functions. We're going to run it through, um, you know, 500,000 loops. Um, and then we get this nice little output. So, you know, I, I, you can run this as many times as they want, but what I'm going to consistently see over and over and over and over again is that doing this this way, is the fastest. So this is sort of the the idea and the the approach that we're taking, you know, to every single line of code is is what's the best way to get this done um, um, overall, and 
and then once you know overall and then once you plug it into the entire entire package you know how, how does that make uh, sanic perform um so with that said let's continue on for my little sidetrack here so the new router um this is sort of the the core of what we're doing um is these you know four lines here uh we we we're using the compile function now for anyone that uh, is not familiar with this, this is uh, part of the, the standard library. And, and the idea behind this, this function is it takes some sort of source code um, and, and it compiles, it does exactly what it says. So just like um, you know, when you go into your, your library after you've run a, run a Python pro project, you see a bunch of these you know, PYC files, you know, what are they? It's just compiled source code. So that's, that's, what, that's what we're doing, except we're doing it um, runtime. So this function um, takes three arguments. We need to pass it some source code. Um, uh, you can pass it um, an AST object. You know, so if you do, uh, you know, if you're building something with the AST module, you can use that here. Um, we are using uh, strings, so we we don't need that. Um, but really, what's important for us, because what we're trying to achieve is we're trying to build a function live at startup, right? So, so what we need is we need this exec mode here. And this exec mode is the way of saying that we're gonna have a whole bunch of statements here and then we're gonna need to um, execute them and compile them all, all together. So what is it that we need to do? Um, we're going to generate um, some, some text. So you can see, you know, it's just a whole bunch of strings. This, these strings are uh, what's gonna make up our, our function. Um, and we're going to give them an indent because you know we're in we're in Python and we and white space matters. Um, so this is going to essentially turn into this. But remember, because we're running this at startup, it's just a string. It's just text. You know, it's it's as if you just had you know find root source is equal to this whole big blob of text. So that's not really helpful. So we go through and we compile it great, but um, it's not really going to do us anything. Just sort of like, um, you know, you get those PYC files by themselves, they don't really do anything. You need to have the Python interpreter run them. So that is what exec does. Um, that is going to run the code, the compiled uh, code. Um, and um, what we need to do here um, is pass in our compiled source code. So that goes here. And now we've got globals and locals. Um, so for anyone that is, is uh, not familiar, basically these are functions um, that return an object that give you sort of uh, everything that is going to be in, in scope um, inside of your, your project. So, you know, globals, you know, obviously that's in the global scope, locals within a function. Or, or, um, and what is really helpful here is because a Zek allows us to pass something, pass a local scope into, into uh, to be executed, that means we can pull something out of it. Um, so we're gonna pass in this, this, this dictionary. And after we execute it, we're gonna have everything that just got executed is now gonna be a local variable, which means we can now pull it out and it'll be as if that function um, existed um, in our in our current scope, and we can just go ahead and we can call it um, as we need to. So, um, you know, I think this is, you, you know, one of those types of things where, um, you know, I I, I think it, it's, it's really fun for anyone to to try, even if you don't have a, a you know, a use case in mind for it. I think this is a really good approach um, to try to really understand how Python interpreter works. Um, what it's doing, why it's doing, um, and so kind of how you can optimize things. Um, you know, you think about it, we had a Python script that was running. It generated a whole bunch of strings. The strings happened to also be source code. Uh, we compiled that, uh, we executed it, and then we were able to spit out this new function. You know, I mean, it's, you know, sort of the, the self-writing code that's kind of, um, um, you know, was that what, what everyone says is going to eventually put us all out of work anyways. Um, okay, so so what's 
how is this applicable for Sanic? Um, we, we built the, we built the router with it. Uh, you know, that, that proof of concept is works. It's, um, it's fast. It's great. Um, but like I said, you know, this is sort of a year long project is, you know, we're, we're at the beginning of the year, but by, by, by the time we get to December, we want to use this, this approach, um, in a number of ways. Um, so, so one of the things that, um, um, you know, like I said, is we want to kind of go through that whole request response cycle, figure out what stuff is applicable uh, and what stuff um, doesn't need to get executed, for example. Um, middleware. Um, so middleware is, is the stuff that allows you to add functionality before or after a request handler comes in. So this is usually places where you put in um, maybe you're doing some custom logging. Maybe you want to have, um, you know, do authentication. Uh, this is a good place for that. Um, um, you know, but okay, so let's, let's talk about authentication. So let's say you have a middleware that runs. Um, and so every single time it runs, you need to check to see if there's auth authentication headers exist, if cookies exist, et cetera. What happens if you have a whole bunch of endpoints that don't need um, that don't need that. Well, currently, Sanex still needs to run those and still needs to do a check to see do we need this or not. But what if what if at startup we already know what uh, what middleware should and shouldn't apply to a particular route? So we can just build that straight into to the uh, to the handler. Um, um, let's see uh, the error this uh, error handling. Uh, one of the things that um, we have built into Santa currently is three different styles of um, responses that you can re retrieve when there's an exception. So, um, you know, if you're generating um, HTML um, from from Santa, then you're going to want an HTML output. If if your endpoint's going to have JSON, you probably want JSON errors. Uh, maybe you want just text errors. You, you know, there's different uh, styles of formatting for your errors. Um, however, how is Sanic supposed to know which one you, you want to use? Uh, we currently do have um, a little bit of a, um, I call it a, of a dumb approach. Um, and, and I say that because um, what it'll do is take a look at the, the response headers and kind of look to see what, um, you know, what the, um, the content type is. Um, but it doesn't always work. Uh, might always not always be accurate. Um, what if you have got a bizarre content type? What if the exception happens uh, before there even is one? So it's not um, um, it's not a great solution yet. So one of the things that we want to do is we want to be able to basically take a look and introspect inside of a handler, see what is intended to be returned, and use that um, um, that type. Uh, and then the last thing here, uh, caching. This is another focus for, for the coming year. Um, and one of the things that we want to be able to do um, is sort of, um, you know, we could pre-build responses um, based upon uh, existing routes um, so that we don't even have to execute them ahead of time. Um, so let's put that aside, come back into the, to the router, what we did here. So here's some you know, pretty standard looking routes. Um, we've got a login. Um, we've got uh, we got a profile. That profile is going to be you know based upon um, you know some sort of a username. Um, we're going to look at a whole bunch of orders. Maybe you want to look at a single order, and then maybe you want to update that single order. So so notice here we've got a put method versus a get method. So we've got five different handlers here. Uh, what what Sanic's going to do is it's going to divide those up. It's going to say, okay, here we've got two different static routes. We've got login uh, and orders, and then on the dynamic side, we've got we've got uh, we've got the profile and these orders. Now notice here, um, because there's two different routes that have the same path, uh, they just have different uh, methods. You know, so there's two different handles here, but it's it's counted um, as as a, as a single route. So we split that all up. We build the tree like, a, um, like, a, like we showed back here. So we build this, 
those for the fact that I thought we build this tree. Um, you know, we 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 build some some source code that looks like this. Um, what is the final result of 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 this? Well, it's going to look something like this. Um, and I think this is really kind of the beauty of this approach is it allows us to add complexity where an application requires complexity, but we can remove complexity for an application that doesn't. So, it, you know, one of the things when you're building out um, a library or a framework or something like this, you want to add functionality. You want to give, you know, the, the people that are going to ultimately use this, this platform, um, you know, different features. However, a lot of times when you add those features, it's sort of taking away from, from you know, sort of the simple use case. So, so how do you make this balance? Um, and this is one of the things that I think is going to help us get there. And one of the things that also um, um, is, you know, be able to, is going to ultimately give us the, the, some of the speed benefits that you already that, you, that I showed you earlier. Um, so what's happening here is basically two things. Um, number one, we're going to take a look at all of our static roots. So we've got two of them. We're going to do. We have an exact match. If we do, great. Let's just bail out quickly here. Um, now, one thing I do want to point out is the reason that we do this try accept methodology here, and we try to use this weak reference, is this is a direct result of that process that I uh, talked about earlier using um, using timing, where we come up with you know ten different um, approaches and see which is going to be the best one in this this situation. Um, you know, this this works. Great. Let's try this other one. Uh, maybe that one works uh, a little bit better. Okay, that's great. Try a third one. No, that one's a little bit worse. You know, you kind of iterate uh, until you find the best solution. And for us, uh, this ended up working working the best. So, what happens if um, we don't find find a static group? Well, now we're going to jump down into this section here. We're going to start walking through that tree. So first, we're going to look to see if there's orders. Let's say we're trying to get to that. That profile root, and, and we say nope, there's no match there. So we're going to jump down to here, um, and then it's going to look and it's going to say, okay, we're in the next part. The next part is dynamic. We're going to make a match. We're going to, you know, drop out. Here's our root. Now we've got a handler. So you know, the router did everything that it was supposed to do. Uh, now it's up to to the app to the um, rest of the application to kind of, you know, to carry on. And this brings us to the next big. Um, change from from uh, 21.3. And that's where we are basically streaming everything. Um, and by stream everything, I don't mean that we're, you know, you can't send, you know, blocks of, of, of responses and there you're only going to send some chunked headers. You know, that's not what I mean. What I mean is um, we're going to unify the, the entire uh, way that the, the the background works and and you know, the the text response is going to be the same as the HTML response, which is going to be the same as streaming responses. So all these things are going to use the exact same architecture. Um, and um, one of the other reasons, I think, actually, one of the one of the driving reasons is it's going to finally allow us to get to HTTP two, which has been something that's been on the radar again since as long as I've been involved in the project. Part of the reason that we we we've sort of started and stopped that one a number of times is that the architecture that we had um, just didn't work very well. Either we were breaking some sort of compatibility, um, uh, which was a non-starter. Um, it was reducing the speed again. Like I told you, you know, speed is a really important thing. So all of a sudden, um, you know, we're slowing things down. You know, we can't we can't have that. Uh, or simply it was just becoming too overly complex versus requiring too many changes. Um, and, and, and so, you know, even though we started and stopped having HTTP2, it sort of uh, never really got to where we wanted to. And I think, um, I think we're finally going to be able to, 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 to introduce that, um, um, which, is, which is good news. Um, uh, what it also does is it removes callbacks. Uh, I'll show you what that looks like. Um, in a little bit, we'll talk a little bit when we talk, when we look at some, um, 
uh, the, the the source code here. Um, and then the last thing is is really a side benefit. You know, we 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 didn't go into the the streaming approach. Um, saying that we that you know, we wanted to increase speed as much uh, as we were going to going to do um, even have it just been a wash we would have been happy with it because there, there's plenty of other benefits um, but um, the fact of the matter is that 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 doing this um, you know again reducing some complexity um, kind of unifying everything um, ultimately gave us you know this increased performance which we're all pretty excited about so what does what does the the request response uh, look like um, in um, 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 in the old version of Sanic? Sorry about that. So we're going to to um, get the get the the handler. We talked we talked about how, how that happens with the router. Um, we execute it, and now we need to determine what to do with it. Now, um, this old approach, you know, is kind of, you know, right here, this 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 highlighted line. This is where um, where old Sanic and new Sanic kind of diverge. Um, so old Sanic, basically, um, if you had a streaming callback, basically, this is what you, what you know how to do. Like if if I wanted to. You know, for example, um, you know, as this example shows, you know, I'm going to select a whole bunch of stuff from, from, from a database, and I just want to iterate over that and send chunks to to the client instead of doing it all at once. Um, I need to to create my handler, return an, a, a streaming object that itself defines a function, um, and you know, it's sort of uh, a confusing approach. It's not so easy for somebody who's just getting into um, to the framework to kind of grasp um, per se, you know, especially in the async IO world, um, you know, callbacks is kind of a, you know, it's, it's like something that we should be able to get away from. Like that's the whole idea of, of, of um, async IO is we want to be able to yield back to this event loop whenever we possibly can. So, so we're kind of, we kind of lost that along the way. Um, so instead what we're doing is what we got down here. Um, so we've got a single handler, and that single handler now can go and send um, data back to to the to the browser as it wants. You know, I don't need to have any callbacks. Um, um, and ultimately, what this is going to look like again? Sorry, more benchmarks. Um, is an increase in performance. So so here's. Um, you know, you could see requests per second. We were getting, you know, 121,000 here uh, on version 20.12. Uh, adding in this new streaming, you know, got us a nice little increase. And then adding the router, ultimately, this is where, where we're at today. Um, so another really, really cool feature. And this one, I think, is one that I'm probably most excited about. It's something that we're introducing um, in 21.3, uh, and you, you're going to see a lot more of this going forward throughout the year. The year. Currently, this is a feature that is uh, it's in beta. Um, it's out there. If you want to start working with it, you can. But nothing inside of Sanic itself is using this under the hood. But ultimately, this is going to replace middleware. This is going to replace listeners, um, and you know, really, what signals are is this sort of um, system that allows your application to talk to itself. So it's, you, can, you can have um, um, dispatching message from one location, and you're going to be listening to them somewhere else, and you'll be able to pass information back and forth. Um, and it was really important for us that this look very similar to, um, to route handlers, um, and that's on purpose, you know. The you know it, it looks it looks familiar, so we want it to feel familiar. So we want it to operate familiar. Um, and ultimately, that's going to make it the easiest for for the end users that are going to try to implement it. So so, you know, what am I even talking about here? What does this even mean? A signal? Okay. 
let's let's look at an example. I think this this makes it a little bit easier to kind of digest. So let's imagine we've got this registration endpoint. You hit register. We're going to go. We're going to do some registration. We're going to do something here. We're going to create the user. Do whatever we need to do. Often, one of the things you want to do is you want to send an email. Uh, sending an email now means you need to go talk to a third-party system. You know, maybe you got to you know, send something to, um, you know, AWS. Maybe you've got, uh, you know, maybe you've got your own uh, email client. Whatever it is, you need to talk to another system to send out that email. However, if you want to get that response back to 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 the user as fast as possible, you don't need to wait for that that email to be sent. We could just pass that off somewhere else. So that's what we're, what we're, what we're doing here is we're, we're creating this ability to dispatch this message. What are we doing? We're, we're dispatching this message called user registration created. It's gonna go execute this in the background um, and we're gonna be able to pass information through this context object. So it's now available to us up here. Uh, and so, so this handler uh, can return this endpoint, this register endpoint as, as quick as we possibly can. Um, without um, without mucking up uh, um, uh, the response cycle. Now, what is sort of underlying this whole thing um, is the exact same router that we just built. So we created um, the the router with the idea that it's going to be able to do double duty here, um, and this is one of the benefits that I think that that we can see is that you know, we can have dynamic routes, um, you know, so so we can dispatch a message here, foobar baz, and it's going to match here. Um, I think that's probably pretty self-explanatory. So ultimately, what is this going to do? Um, it's going to do a lot for, for Sanic under the hood. Um, it, like I said, it's going to handle a lot of um, the, um, you know, the middleware. Um, but where I think this comes really powerful is sending messages from one part of the application to another. And, and, I, and, and I created this little example here um, where, um, you know, you know you've, got a, you've got a trigger on an endpoint, you're going to dispatch something that's going to go somewhere else, you're going to do something else on somewhere other part of the application. Um, and then when it's done, it's going to send back another message. And over here inside of our handler, it's going to be waiting on it. You know, maybe this isn't you know the greatest example, but I think the point is that um, we're 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 going to create this system to to um, send messages uh, back and forth, um, and then ultimately what'll happen is there's going to be um, a lot of parts of the application that you're going to be able to tie into. So if you want to add additional functionality. Um, you know, you're gonna. It's gonna have. You're basically gonna be able to create these handlers. You know, you could have custom handlers like like I have here, but then Santa will give you a list of you know, however many um, handlers that you can tie into. Um, so those are the three big features we got in twenty one three. There's a whole lot more stuff. So I highly would uh, I would highly suggest you take a look at the documentation. Um, there's a pretty pretty good um, upgrade guide. Um, it's got a lot of information on what's changed, what's deprecated, um, um, and then here's just a quick little overview of some of the other things. Actually, one more thing that I do want to point out is this one down here, um, because this I think is going to be another really exciting feature here. Is we've added a context object to a connection. What does that mean? So when you have a, a connection come in from a browser or, or a client, oftentimes what will happen is there'll be a keep alive header. So um, if you've got you know web app that's going to be sending 10 different requests, rather than making 10 new connections, it's going to open up a connection and then it's going to send its 10 requests in, in succession. succession. Um, so what we've done here is we've added context object onto that connection that's going to be available to all your requests which essentially is going to allow you to to store state and save that state from from one request to the next um, so you know you could imagine this might be useful for auth authentication um, or 
don't know. You tell me what that's, that's, that's one of the, one of the, one of the things that I, I've learned about being involved in a project like this is I might think uh, I'm building a feature to do X, Y, and Z, and somebody else is going to do it, use it for something completely different. So I think that's um, kind of one of the, the exciting things for, for me here. Um, so that's pretty much everything that I've got. I'm uh, happy to, uh, to field any questions that anyone might have. If you, if you want to reach out to me privately, separately, um, I'm pretty easy to get a hold of. Uh, and you can, you know, um, uh, we've got a Discord server for Sanic. You can get a hold of me there. We've got, um, you know, a, a forum set up on, on Discord. So it's pretty easy to message me there. Um, so feel free to reach out to me. I'll be very happy to talk with anyone about this. 